hey Kelly, and um, this is Kelly. Um, and I wanted to do a kind of quick how-to on these um, greenery things that I made and kind of show you how I approached it using that watercolor technique. This one's particularly um, a little more challenging only because I have the leaves overlapping and you kind of have to figure out like where they start and stop or decide where they start and stop. And so I used, I got some green, some yellow ochre, some regular yellow, and some white. I can't remember which yellow I used. I probably used yellow ochre only because it's my favorite, but, um, and then I have my jar, my gross jar I always use for my uh, paints and my water, and water is your friend in this situation. So I'm going to, you can either, and I was gonna say, if you wanna go ahead and kind of indicate lightly where you know the leaves would be overlapping. You can kind of see in the pattern like where like one would be overlapping the other. You can lightly put that in pencil and it'll just go away when you put your acrylic on there. But this is kind of how I do it and I use a lot of water. So here is, I'll start with my green and water. And the majority of your paint is going to go where the two leaves intersect, like along that edge. So, so I will start right here. I'm going to grab some more paint because it's definitely thicker right here. So I don't love this paintbrush, so I'm going to swap out. I think it's time for some new ones. and then grab some water. So I have that thick line of paint and then just pull it out with water and then it, you'll see how it starts to show that little gradation already. Super easy. Um, then I'll grab a little bit more and put it on the top of this one and then go in for my water. Sometimes you're just using water and pulling the paint down. And this is where I'd be like, okay, so maybe I want a little bit of yellow shining in there. Like that. And then, you know, this is going to still be wet right here. And if you want a little hue of yellow inside that, just pull it right in there. And I'm going to soften up this edge just a little bit. So I'm just going to keep going for a couple of them so you can kind of get a feel for what I did. So again, like the thicker paint along the edge where you know the two leaves intersect. And then kind of clean it off so it's mostly water coming in. And then you can kind of, this is called scrumbling, and kind of scrumble it down. I'd like it a little bit darker so you can put some more in there, but you know, once you get going, you get going pretty fast. And here's another area where it intersects, and you want it to, you want to be able to tell that. And then I'm going in with water again, and because acrylics are so fast drying, you, know, you don't want to take your time. I mean, you want to get right in there with the water and start pulling it. We'll add a little yellow, mix it in there. What is so cool, because it really soaks in the color and almost naturally creates that gradation, which is nice. I'll do another one. Like this technique is so great. Like I used it on some of the birds that I've designed. It's like perfect for bird wings. It's really great for flowers. Don't get me wrong, I really love like the name signs with like the all one color on the flowers because that's the really pretty kind of modern look, but you could totally change it up and make it so much more dimensional by using this sort of technique. And it's really super easy. And it's all about the water. So I'm going to go grab a bunch of water. And you don't have to be super precious about it, you know, because it's 
fairly forgiving. I come from a painting background, so I'm pretty comfortable with this, but and then here I am. I'm just gonna pop some yellow in. You can just, you know, maybe a little bit more there. So you can see that's the effect. And it's totally, well, let's have a little bit of fun on one because I don't know where you live, but I live in Washington state and our leaves are already turning, which I'm kind of annoyed about because I feel like summer just started. But um, we have some really beautiful trees that go like a super yellow. So you could really make this kind of poly too. And then I'm gonna use my water and pull that in. So I'll just kind of show you that yellow one. And if you feel like there's like a line that you don't like, like between the thicker paint and the thinner paint, you can just go back in there with water and just kind of scrub it a little bit. I'm gonna pop in some extra yellow for my fall one. And then I'll do one more and then I will stop talking because I think you probably have already gotten the point. But I'll probably end up doing some demos with like some flowers and the feathers that I've done. It's a pretty similar technique, but I definitely have more little tricks up my sleeve for painting stuff. I went to school for painting and then did some classical training too, but that's all that was all oil painting. Which would be super fun to do on wood because oil painting in wood. It's pretty traditional, but not good if you're selling anything because it takes forever to dry. So here's my other fall yellow one, and then I'm just going to pop in that yellow. Okay, so there's my fall ones, and then kind of the green ones. That could be a little more even right there. And see, that was like my first one that I did and I still can manipulate it with the water a little bit. You can kind of push it and pull it around with the water. Okay, let me know if that helped you out and anybody else that got the file. Um, um, and definitely with my bird files and you know, if I'd, I've done some flower files too where this technique is like super effective if you want, want to go that extra mile and do something more than just like a flat color. Anyway, there you go, Kelly. And um, thanks for buying my coin file. Bye.